Well, hello there, boys and girls. If you look around the studio, you probably think, damn, he, did he just sit there in the chair all week? Because nothing's changed behind him. And you'd be right. Uh, I wasn't able to work on anything this week. You ever have one of those weeks? I feel like Stretch Armstrong. I was pulled in like 10 different directions, and none of them were even near this room. It feels funny if I go through a week and I don't work on something in this in this particular part of the building but hey it is what it is my attention has been needed elsewhere part of the game i guess but i am in this room to answer a few questions so we're going to do that we're going to start by swinging around to last week anything i may have missed or anything that may have been sent in to uh one of our one of many of our media outlets and then filtered through by hank to me all right someone by that goes by the name of ad so i have a problem with my live c450r i turn the key the fuel pump primes it turns on runs for three to five seconds then turns off i turn the key a second time the fuel pump won't prime and the quad does nothing all right well every time you turn that key on it should be priming that pump even though you know it has pressurized after just one cycle and oh and you also said i'll wait a day and it does the same thing again turns on and shuts down what now well and i think this is definitely going to be uh on the electrical side of things uh, i'd find it hard to believe that this had anything to do with the uh, the fuel pump so there's a couple of things we can look at let's hope it's the simpler one first um I don't know why, but uh, Yamaha put a tip over switch on the uh, the 450R, and I believe it is located on the back side of the machine near the battery. It's a device about probably that big around, and it's not that large. And it'll have, I think, three wires that go into it. And inside of that is a pendulum, but I've, I've never experienced it, but I've heard of other machines that with one that's starting to fail, it would have the symptoms that yours uh, seems to be exhibiting. If that's the case, then great. Um, if not, then I would probably lean toward a uh, problem with the ICU because this, uh, ICU, the ECU, because this does, and maybe it needs to go to the ICU, because this does seem to be systemic. Um, let's hope it's just the tip over switch. You replace it and you're good to go. Otherwise, you may be looking at a new ECM or ECU, depending on how. Uh, how you wanted to describe it. Sorry, I don't have better news. Hopefully, it's just the uh, the tip switch. Bebe had asked me, uh, what will cause a 99 TRX 400 EX? Boy, do we get questions on that bike or that, or that machine. I can't wait to build ours. To cut out at wide open throttle. Okay. Um, you didn't give me a lot of information to go on. Um, well, when it's cutting out, there's, well, there's two, two things that can cause that, more than likely. Either too much fuel or not enough. Uh, I'm going to go under the assumption that maybe uh, you just don't have enough fuel. Uh, the questions I would ask you if we were uh, still communicating would be, do you have any uh, different type of air filter on it? Are you still running an air, uh, an air filter lid? Are you running any type of different exhaust? Anything that would make the machine start to lean out? because I think that's the way uh, or what your machine seems to be leaning toward. If you've got an aftermarket um, exhaust system on it and, and or remove the, uh, the air box filter, you may, or air box lid, you may want to consider going up a step on your um, main jet. Now you want to be sure, run it wide open, do what they call a hot cut cut the ignition, let go of the, uh, the the throttle, coast to a stop, pull your plug, hopefully with a set of gloves, look at your plug. And if it's just light white or just white around the ceramic and around the uh, the metal of the bottom base of the uh, spark plug, well, that tells you right there, it's gonna be too lean. If it's soot black, well, too much fuel. So if it's the, the white, which I'm guessing it will be, Go ahead and maybe go up a size on your jet. I can't remember off the top of my head um, what the uh, the main jet size is. I want to say it's a 145. So maybe just go up a notch. 
to a, a 150 or 155 and see what that does. Let me know. Uh, Michael had asked me, what is the symptom of the stator is going bad? Uh, it's part of your charging system. So, I mean, if you're getting a, uh, a low out or a low um, charge or either one that's too high, that could be a, a symptom of your, your stator going out. And nine times out of time, nine times out of 10, it's going to be your regulator rectifier. But your, your stator, of course, is sending AT, AC voltage to your voltage regulator rectifier, which then it in turn flips the signal to AC and then smooths that out to make it a DC signal using recti um, rect not rectifiers, uh, diodes, and uh, more than likely um, capacitors inside of it. But I've done several videos um, showing how to diagnose each one. If you think your stator is going bad, um, my favorite test to do is not just a gnome test because um, I don't think that's very accurate. Set your, your meter to uh, AC volts, unplug the, the lines coming from your stator, start it up and see what you're reading. Uh, you should read north of 25 volts AC. I've seen them go as high as 45. but. <clears throat> to answer your question, uh, if, if it's going bad, short answer is your vehicle isn't charging as it should be. Rail rotor. Um, is it possible to overfill the rear differential? Well, sure. Uh, <laughs> I had to pour almost an entire bottle of oil, eight ounces, before it came out the weep hole. Okay. Um, we'll do Chelsea. No problem. I'm running a 15 Rancher. All right. I've Pretty sure we did a uh, how-to video, Hank, if you'll drop that in the chat, on our 2012, and we did a front and a back. And if memory serves, the, the front, it's there's not much that goes in there. It's like three or four ounces. Uh, the back, eight, sounds about right. Just make sure that your fill, the fill hole is up really high but you're, uh, you pull that lower plate and drop it out and you can get to the drain plug. But right over on the side, and this is facing forward, is gonna be the weep hole. And you wanna fill it up until it starts weeping out. But that should be about eight ounces. So it sounds to me like you're spot on. But go uh, reference that video and I can walk you through it. All right, Pennsylvania ghost diaries. <laughs> My solenoid, my solenoid is good. My starter is fine, but it still won't engage the solenoid when I push the start button. Could it be a relay? Well, your solenoid is your relay. So that would make me think that it's probably just your starter button itself. Did you check that? So if you're sure your solenoid's good and your starter's good, well, it's going to be that starter button because that's what's telling your relay or the solenoid to make that connection and send power down to the, all right, Chelsea, I'll get to it. <laughs> um, completely derailed my train of thought. Uh, it allows uh, that battery power to make it down to the starter. There we go. All right, let's see if we got a few questions and we do. So let's go. <clears throat> Kerm, how's it going, Kerm? So what's your thoughts on a hot rod crank for a CR85? Would you go OEM? I'm not that familiar with the hot rod um, products. I think they're more entry level, especially on something that's as high strung as the uh, CR85. I would probably lean more toward the, uh, the OEM. Or I know that, I know that uh, Weissco makes uh, cranks for that particular unit and they have a, a what they call a bottom end kit and that's gonna have all your bearings and gaskets and O-rings and the whole nine yards where you can go and the crank itself, of course, where you can go in and do a complete job. So you may wanna consider that if you're trying to cut, save a little bit of money because uh, compared to the OEM, if you go in and buy the OEM crank and then all the other gaskets and everything else is gonna be associated with it, um, you'll come out ahead looking at the Weissco. And you know how I feel about Weissco. I think they make great equipment. Paul, Paul Gravinsky. How's it going, Mr. Paul? I was about to ask John, why is that thing still sitting there? <laughs> I, clock, uh, I just clocked in. I've just been pulled in too many different directions, and uh, I hate to admit this, but it's, see, it even happens to me. I'm still waiting on a, a certain part 
before I can get in there and rebuild the uh, the shocks on it. See, you're not the only ones. Sometimes even even I. <laughs> How about especially me? I have to wait because uh, if the manufacturer doesn't have it, the chances are we um, and nobody else will have it either unless we had it in stock. But in that case, we didn't. So I'm having to be patient. They will be here eventually, and then I will get that thing off the lip because I want to get the YXZ back in there because uh, I can't wait to finish up the frame because the engine's ready to go. Now I just need to get the frame back into a rolling chassis so Tracy can get back down here and we're going to put that turbo kit on it. So definitely. Oh, and they're reminding me. And we are, speaking of things behind me, we're giving that away. Um, we started that one on 11.28 and it is going through 12.30. So every day, up until 12.30, you can enter once a day to win that machine. And, and they're, um, I think they're actually going to have me deliver it to whoever the winner is, as long as they're in the continental United States. Unfortunately, I think that's the only, play, only people that can enter. So if you live outside of the States, sorry. <clears throat> but head over to the website, just partzilla.com, and uh, fill out the form, enter to win. Do we have any... Uh, Bonus codes for the, the people today, Hank? Do we? <laughs> we talked about it last week, so I don't know if that came up with anything. But <sighs> with or without the codes, get over there, enter to win. It doesn't cost you anything to do so. XCATV. All right. He's asked me, Elka Stage 5 versus Fox Floats. Best for life and cost of maintenance, uh, going on a Raptor 700. Man, that is a tough call there. Um, <laughs> uh, I've looked at both of them for my personal machines. And I think for longevity, I'd probably lean toward the Fox. Just my thoughts. Uh, Elka makes a great product. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I would probably go with the Fox. Just my opinion. Paul came back. So we got lucky on an OEM rotor, but aftermarket stator. Okay. One of the magnets fell off in my hand when I was trying to install the rotor. So JB Well to the rescue. Cool. Now just waiting on to dry and first start. Well, let me know how that how that goes. And it should hold it in place. I mean, it's going to get pressed in there as it spins anyway, you know, once it dries. <clears throat> Isaac S. Hi there. I have a 2020 Kawasaki Terrace. How about a Terex? Terex 800, um, I would like to add a secondary fuel filter. Do you know if the fuel pump has enough pressure for it to pass through and go to the engine? Thank you so much. <sighs> really going to depend on your, your fuel, the filter that you're thinking about, because just throwing on one of those plastic things, those are all for low pressure. And uh, that, that Kawasaki is going to have in between 45 and 50 PSI going through it. And so it would shatter it. I said, don't do that. I don't know of one off the top of my head. You'll have to have a metal one uh, to go in there. My, my question would be, is, is your fuel that dirty? But um, do I know of one that can deal with it? No, not off the top of my head. Uh, but to answer your question, will the fuel pump pressurize a, a fuel filter You know, going up to your, your system? Sure. It won't care. The trick is, will that fuel filter be able to handle the pressure? That's going to be the trick. So just be careful because you don't want to create a bomb under your, your seat. All right. Tamir, Tamir is asking me, hey, John, thanks for the tip from last week. I checked the accuracy of the compression gauge and found that my gauge deviates by 30%. Exactly what you said could happen. You are my champion. Hey. I'm just speaking from experience. I, I've, uh, I have chased that rabbit once before myself. And uh, it, a gauge, false gauge reading almost had me pull apart a perfectly good engine. So kind of like going to the doctor. Sometimes you have to get a second opinion. Well, I'm glad I was able to help you, man. <clears throat> Tamir um, Carney also came back. I received uh, the last shipment and your new packaging is really good. You're liking that, huh? Oh, they won't let 
haven't really shared much that goes on in, in the new building, but uh, there's an, uh, what he's talking about is we we have this machine is the best way to describe it that uh, actually builds a box from a, a flat piece of cardboard, and it knows the size of the part, the size of the part, and and they measure it when it goes into or it measures when it goes into the box, so it knows how far to to push the box down so we can maximize and save money as far as the shipping goes. That's how we're able, able to ship things much more efficiently and effectively is by going with that system. And then it puts the top on it, slaps a label on it, and then sends it out the door. It's, it's really, it's really cool. And if they ever let me get in there with a, and just do a quick video, I'd love to share it with y'all one day. There's some really high, high tech stuff that the, uh, the powers that be came up with when they uh, built the new distribution center. But um, I'm glad you took notice of that, Tamir, that we could get you taken care of. Paul Gravinsky, the customer did bring the broder by and inform me that, that this 1987 Bayou was making that crunching noise whew, for quite a few years before he brought it to me. I'm sure hope uh, after this, it fires up. And me too. And anything that's making a crunching noise is usually not a good thing. And they did, they being Hank, they uh, they posted video of how to service the rancher differential. And I think I did the front and the back on that particular video. And they haven't released any um, codes as of yet, but um, if we do, it'll uh, it'll pop up on our instagram page so you might you probably want to go check that out instagram.com forward slash partzilla and then you can keep up with any any codes that uh that we may be throwing out and anything else we may be giving away xca tv i'm struggling with this choice <laughs> yeah I, I get it i get it you're looking at both of them on a split screen saying to, which way do i go but honestly either elka or the fox you're going to be happy regardless. They're, they're both top-notch systems, so don't stress too much. Steve, New Zealand. Hey, John. RE, last week's question about the high idle on the 14 wife Z450. Yes, EFI version. Okay. Try it again, and so it does not on the initial starts. I tried it again, and more so does on the initial start and once it's ridden and once it's hot okay i think i remember this um a 450 it, it when you're running it it comes off of idle and it just it's it idles high and doesn't want to fall down except for uh it has to wait a few seconds <sighs> damn what could be causing that man i almost wonder if uh, if it, it may be uh, a faulty um, injector, I wonder if it's letting just th that little bit of fuel dribble out and not and not that valve is inside. It's basically just a valve. That's all a uh, uh, fuel injection a fuel injector is. So I think I go ahead and replace the injector because I think that's I think it's dribbling out fuel when it shouldn't be when you've got the uh, the flour all chopped. Just my thought. But hey, pull it out, pressurize it, and see if there's a drip coming out of without the bike even uh, started. We just uh, just run it through its cycle to where it at least pressurizes it, and then you know, have it out, pulled out of the intake, and take a look at the tip and see if it's uh, dribbling out. Try that, then let me know what you see. Norwood Sportsman's 570 ATV stuff. Hey, John, what's the best way to find out what Polaris ATV shocks are interchangeable? Um, that, that's, if you're talking about which different models that they will fit on, you can uh, look up your, uh, just go to our website and look up Polaris year making model. And then when you pick a particular part, it, it'll show a, fit, a fitment guide over to or fits these units over to the right. And that'll give you all the different machines that that particular uh, um, part, whatever it may be, um, what the different machines it will uh, it will fit on. Lena is asking me, "Hey John, uh, John, Jim Athens in Greece. Well, welcome, welcome to our little discussion discussion group, Jim. 
Hope things are well overseas. Um, Opa, Opa Coral, Carl, uh, Coral. I'm no good at pronouncing these names. <laughs> I just order parts from uh, Zuma from Partzilla. Great customer service. Well, good. I'm glad we could help you out. Well, all right, guys. I already did my questions uh, from last week that I missed. And I caught up with y'all today. Y'all going to let me get out of here early? <laughs> Looks that way. All right, guys. Well, with that, I caught you this time. That means y'all are all out there enjoying your machines, I hope. But anyway, I just want to say thank you for swinging by, spending a little time with us. And we certainly want to thank you for shopping with us at partzilla.com. And hopefully I'll be able to get some video and maybe ship and uh, drop it in the drop a link in there to where we can show you what we built across the street from the building that I'm in. Well, once again, thanks for swinging by. Y'all have a great weekend, a great week. And God willing, we will see you again next Friday at three. Y'all take care.